Hey, y'all. It's spring. Hi, my name's Helga, and this is my, I don't know what floss to. It is Friday, April 27th, 2018, and I totally know what day it is because it's the last Friday of the month, which means around the corner is mania. Okay, I'm just going to jump in. Like, let's do this. What am I all into? Because that is my new favorite segment that everybody talks about. It is spring. And I am all into the birds. Julie says put a bird on it. I'm a birder. So let me just teach you a little bit about birding. Not really. I'm not going to give you a lesson. But I'm going to show you the book I got for my son. Which is amazing. Or maybe my mom got it for him. My mom might have gotten this one. It's called The Backyard Bird Lover's Guide. Attracting, Nesting, Feeding. And that's probably backwards. And you can probably get it on Amazon. It's from Story Publishing in Vermont. It's priced higher in Canada. Sorry, Canada. There's a northern flicker on the back. That's on my bucket list. I've never seen one of those before, but I will someday in my lifetime. Um, I'm guessing uh, Oriole, probably Tanagers, Western Bluebird, some sort of Hummingbird, and some sort of Sparrow. It's a real simple kid's book. A um, little bit of... Uh, how to cite them, what to look for, habitats, markings, things like that. So my son has this book, and it's birding season. Next weekend is the Feather Flock, Feather Fest. It's the spring uh, bird count for kids. So we're going. Um, I didn't go to the winter one. I think I was sick or I had something else going on. Um, but my son and my husband went, and they saw Becky. Hi, hey, Becky, the obsessed stitcher. Um, so what I'm going to show you guys is my bird book. You don't care? Sorry. Fast forward or move on. I'm good with it. So this is a, I don't know, plannery thing that I got at uh, Target. And the flags you see is my life list. So whenever I see a bird for the first time, I tab it. And this is not my life list. This is my mom list because... My bird book from my childhood that has the checks in it is, we can't find it. My mom probably has it, but she can't find it either. Or one of my siblings ended up, it doesn't matter. So I started over when my son got into birding. And so what I do, I keep flags in my planner and I just flag when I see a bird for the first time. I then have two other things I spot or track. When we go on an intentional bird trip, I write down everything we saw that day. So like if we say, hey, we're going to go birding this weekend and we're going to this place, I write down every species of bird we see that, that trip and keep track. The last thing I track, and I'll just take this out to show you, is this was custom made for me from the Yellow Paper House, which is different than Nell. Um, I think she's also Yellow Paper House, but this is a, it's an Etsy store. But what it is, it's a habit tracker specifically made for me for birding. And so for March, what I do is every bird we see in the month of March, we write down. And then every time I see it, I check it. And I only went out on three, yeah, we only had three birding trips in March and we had like none in April. April's a really busy month for us, so there was hardly any in April. But the cool thing is, every time you see that star, that's a lifeless bird, meaning it's a bird that I don't personally recall ever seeing. And so I'm going to mark that I saw it for the first time. So in the month of March, I saw a white-tailed kite for the first time. And I, I positively ID'd a white-crowned sparrow. I've probably seen them before. They're very common here. But I can now hear them and ID them and see them and ID them. So I felt I could mark them off. But in April, I had a big one. I saw a peregrine falcon for the first time. I saw the peregrine falcon on April 13th, which is my father's birthday. Uh, peregrine falcons were one of my dad's birds, like he loved them. Uh, I was driving home from work, and I was one of those jerks that slows down and was like staring at the light pole, and I was like almost to a stop. Um, like you would have gone around me or honked and said, oh, moron, get out of the way. It's up on the post. I'm watching him. My husband happened to be home. Our family had gone through the flu. That was a fun one. 
And so I'm watching him and I call my husband. I said, put on your pants and your shoes. Cause I assumed he was in pajamas. Meet me out front. We're flipping around. <clears throat> I drove home, grabbed my son and my husband, got in the car, drove back to where he was, stood across the street, watched him for a good like 20 minutes and then went to get in our car to leave because he took off and he had landed right by our vehicle where we had parked and we got to watch him for another 20 minutes and he was even lower and closer and I got to just watch him. And that was, I, I called one of my girlfriends the next morning and I was, I'm still so excited by it. Like it was just such a special sighting and I called my sister and I put it on Facebook and it was just a really awesome blessing on my dad's birthday. Um, I think I've mentioned before, my dad's been gone about 11 years. I think it's been 11 years, almost 12. Um, he passed away when I was 26. And so I believe in signs. And this to me was a sign that my dad is watching out for me. And it just kind of made my, my day, right? It made my week. It made my month. I'm still talking about it. So I'm all into the birds. It's that time of year. Everybody is out. A lot of my local friends are starting to post pictures of quail on their pages, which means we just got to keep looking. They're out there. We just haven't found any quail yet this year. Um, there's usually quail around the junior college. We usually see them running around in the, uh, there's a kind of a brushy area in the back of their parking lot. Um, we've seen lots of Phoebes. There's been lots of Western bluebirds. Um, spring is for the birds. So that's what I'm all into. Whips. There are two or three people in this world that can make me drop everything and start a new project. One of them is the little person I live with. And he has this whip by the Frosted Pumpkin that he's been working on for well, about a year. It's the first one in their Hello series, and it's Hello Spring. And for what's worth, I had started it for my, I had planned to make it myself, and he claimed it. So it became his. So that's where he's at. And he wanted to work on it, but didn't want to work it on loan. So he said, can we do a sow? And like I said, one of those people that I will drop everything for. And I said, sure. And I'd recently discovered linen, which I'm still working through. It's harder than I thought. Um, 28 count seems to be my jam. But of course we can, bud. So I started my own. So this is just on a 28 count uh, Irish linen from Michael's Joann's with a coupon, nothing super fancy. And I've got my little person and I'm starting to work on the picket fence. And he's a lot further than me, but we work on it together and that's fun. So it's Hello Spring from the Frosted Pumpkin. And it's got some great little birds and it's got a wheelbarrow and flowers and it's a fun little simple project. So we're working on that together. And that's Hello Spring. My project for May that I'm most excited about, I think May is when we're allowed to start. I'm starting in May, whether we're allowed to or not, because otherwise it'll never get done, is the Eliza Belcox by Hands Across the Sea Samplers, or as my friend calls them, hats, which I didn't get, but now I do. So everybody has seen Eliza. Right? That bird. Oh. Like I said, my head is in the birds right now. So if it's got a bird on it, I'm in. Um, I am doing this on Picture This Plus Earthen 32 count. I discovered a magnifier on my, um, connecting a magnifier to the hot light in my stitchy spot. And that completely changed the game for me. Because when I wear, sorry. When I wear magnifiers and I look up, it gives my head spinning, like, you know, it hurts my head. But I can use the magnifying glass and I can see the fabric. And I can't get a ton done. I can only do, like, you know, a little at a time. I basically, one thread is about all I can handle. But I'm plugging along. And that's where I'm at. My minder is from Sleepy Kitty Stitches. Sleepy, I don't know. Kylie Richards. I think that's her name. I don't remember anymore. I'm sorry, Kylie. I know you're... I can see you in my mind, but for life me, I haven't seen you floss a long time, so. 
but it's a, I think it's an American Goldfinch from her. And that's my very teeny tiny, barely anything start. Like I said, to my naked eye, this looks like paper, but with a magnifier, I can definitely see the grid. And this fabric is just to die for. And I started... I started right here in the center, and I'm pretty sure I'm working on that leaf. I'm pretty sure that's what that is, but I don't actually know. Let's see if the picture shows them. Um, the other thing I did, which I don't know if it's okay or not, is I made a photocopy of it. Yeah, that's what that is. I'm on this leaf. Because I did like that, and now I'm like here. So, we'll see. Um, it's very slow going. This is not my, this is not my comfort zone. But I do a little bit at a time and someday I'll finish, right? Someday. That is in my Made by Mama Joan bag. The official, I think round two. I want him to be a Junko, but he's not. I don't know what he is, but he's pretty. And I have a pink interior. I, my lighting is crap. I'm in the office, but it's kind of night. Well, it is not kind of nighttime. It is nighttime. So I have like eight lamps on so you can get light in here. And it's not great. But it's, it'll, it will serve our purpose for this evening. I realized I like the name Eliza. So... Clearly, Eliza Belcox will be called Eliza Belcox because that's her name. But Eliza is actually what I had named my um, time traveler, my Joan Elliott pattern. And I'm not changing her name. Her name is still Eliza because it suits her. Uh, I feel like I might have shown this to you already. And all I've done is itty bitty bit. <clears throat> but this is for one of my very good friends. I'm doing it in color 777, and I've done that much. This is my work project right now. It's one color. It's actually two colors, technically, because you do a, the back stitch is supposed to be in a different color, I guess. But I might just do it in one. I don't know. I haven't got that far. But it's from, what is this from? I don't know. It's from a shop on Etsy. If you just look up cross stitch in this house, there's a Disney one, there's a Harry Potter one, there's a bunch of them that come up. So I'm sure you could find it. But it's a single color project. I work on it at work. I've done two letters, meaning it sits on my desk at work. I haven't been stitching at work. I've been pretty darn busy. So it's like when I go to lunch, I basically eat my lunch super fast and then kind of just decompress. It's in my ghastly bags from So Much to Love. I don't know if you remember when the Gasleys were like the thing to have. I have a little bit of Gasleys fabric. It's not really my thing. I like having a project bag. I saw people do entire quilts. I don't know if that's for me. And then my last random thing I worked on is not cross stitch, it's embroidery. And I don't actually know what I'm doing. And I don't know if you guys can even tell what I'm trying to do. But one of my good friends had a birthday, and I did not get this done in time. But I kind of sort of drew out a Starry Night motif. I don't know if you can see that. Is it sure? I guess a little bit. And I'm slowly working my way through the embroidery. So this is on a piece of menagerie fabric from Cotton and Steel. It's just this really beautiful sunset. And I'm working on the TARDIS right now, but when I'm done with the TARDIS, I will embroider everything else. And then my hope is to make this a pillow for my friend. Someday. Like I said, big aspirations, right? I can show you what I didn't finish. It's my English paper piecing. I literally am exactly, like exactly where I was last time. I didn't touch it. So this is the mandolin block by Tales of Cloth. People have been talking about English paper piecing again. I think 
things go in trends, right? So floss tubers are trying to talk about knitting and English paper piecing. So I do both of those. Um, I didn't knit at all this week, did I? My car project, but that's just a circular baby blanket that really does nothing to it. Um, and this is my English paper piecing. This is the mandolin quilt by, um, what is her name? The Tales of Cloth. It's a monthly club. This is still January. Actually, this isn't even January. This is my show me what you want to do with it, and I'll send you it for free if you finish it in time block. But everything's prepped. Just got to keep sewing them on. I might even finish it. But my son is reading a book by Elliot Schiffer. Schiffer? 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 I don't know. It's called The Last Rainforest. And so he renamed my quilt The Last Rainforest. So this is my Last Rainforest mandolin quilt. And that's my English paper piece project. This is what I work on with my kids at martial arts right now. Because there's a little boy there who always asks me, what are you making? So I tell him I'm making a blanket. It's a lot more impressive to him than cross stitch. So that's what I've been doing lately. I also have her ice cream soda quilt from last year started. That's also for our 50th wedding anniversary. We celebrate number 10 this year. I got time. Um, that's going to be a picnic blanket when my husband's going to take me in our hovercraft to the top of the mountain and repropose for our 50th wedding anniversary. We got it all planned out. But he'll need a picnic blanket, right? So, ta-da! I will have this beautiful quilt that I've made in my 30s, or started in my 30s, that I finished for our 50th wedding anniversary. Yeah, that's all I worked on this past two-week period. I did not touch this at all because I lost it in the office after I filmed and I found it as I was getting ready to film again. It was underneath the basket I keep my whips in. Lest you forget, it's my first linen project. I caught my debutante. It was my training wheels for Eliza Belcox. It's a scrolly, is it Quaker? Is that what's called? There's like hidden motifs. I don't know. It's by Judy Wetman or JVW Designs, the French hen, La Poulet. I guess that's how you say it. I apologize if I slaughtered the French. Um, and I had planned to work on, oh, it's all in fancy floss. I had planned to work on it, but... I misplaced it. So I found it. Yay. So no more progress than I had before. And it'll go back into my bag. Which is actually where my English paper piecing lives as well. It's called the, it's the rules of quilting. It says, don't bleed on the quilt. Measure twice. Cut once. It's not a mistake. It's a creative opportunity. There's no quilt police. Rules, there are no rules. Or rules, there are rules. Schmark. Um, Cal got me this for Christmas one year. She's one of my best friends from high school. Um, it's my Taekwondo bag. Like I said, it's been missing. So I'll put my EPP back in there. This will be in there. And then I keep my, um, my weather sampler on me at all times. Oh, I worked on my weather sampler. That's right. <clears throat> the weather sampler. And that goes into Mania. Am I ready for Mania? Yes. Yep, ready for Mania. Okay. So, Mania plans. I love Mania videos. I, I'll be honest, I had a stack of like 15 projects and I went, how's that worked out for you in the past? So, I went back to three. Right? Yes, three. Because I'm still planning to do a royal wedding start. I want to keep working on Eliza a little at a time. And I want to finish my chicken, my debutante. So I've already got three other projects. They're like my regular rotation, right? And now we started this. 
which means if he wants to work on it, this is where my energy needs to be. Because I think it's important that I make myself available and my, my plans need to be flexible if he wants to work on something with me. Like, I need to make that time for him. Sorry, I keep, because you, I just showered, which, I mean, I showered, that's good. But my hair's bothering me. Um, so my weather sampler, Tom and Lily Creations, 2017, their stitch along. It's a spiral of flowers, petal per day. Everybody worked on it. I lost interest in February. But you see highlighting, that means I've done it. So January is done. You got a week and a half of February left. And then March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, December. So that's what I work on before bed. I try and put at least two petals in a day. Sometimes it goes better than others. I've got a weird hole here that I don't love, but apparently it's how it goes. I can't figure out where I miscounted it. So once I'm done, I will send this to the council and ask them how to draft the um, leaves for back stitching. One of, the, one of the members of the council is a pattern designer and the other is an aspiring pattern designer, but both of them are way more creative so let's put their expertise to work, shall we? Okay, that's about all right. So Sonoma County, California, 2017, January and three quarters of February. Clearly it's cold, lots of blues. I think did I ever get to the eighties? No. This is 50s, 60s, yeah, this is 40s, 50s, and 60s. So I don't know if you remember, but last year we had record heat, like 106, 105, it doesn't get that hot here, and we had that. And then we had those fires. Um. I've already decided I need to find a way to mark the fires. And I was talking to my sister and she said, what if you did them with tips in gray, kind of like char? I don't know how I feel about that, but it's an interesting idea. So I'm mulling on it. I am soliciting your opinion, which means feel free to pop your two cents at the bottom. Um, but I do feel because of the impact it had in my community, I do need to acknowledge the fires. Um, in case you forget, my color chart comes from something on Reddit. I think if you look up uh, cross stitch weather colors, it comes up. The person put a temperature and a corresponding DMC. I didn't think I was going to go above like here. I'm now going to use the entirety of the chart on this direction, but I should never go below here. I mean, I pulled these four just in case. I doubt it. I don't think we get below 40. Um, well, we do, but I don't know that we did last year or that I, I think I record the high of the day. I use, I use weather underground. So, I don't know, doesn't matter. So 2017 weather sampler is my first mania project. My goal for mania is to get correspondingly current on the date. So in the month of May, I want to get February, March, April, May, and done. We know my chart correctly. This is my, like I said, this is my before bed project. And I've started carrying it with me because it's a good social project. Um, you know, hanging out with friends. Um, take this one to Bible study. Take this one to church. Because there's not a lot needed. 
And if I do just one petal, I've still accomplished something. And that feels pretty good. I keep this in a little notions bag that came from my local cult shop that has flamingo fabric. And then it has a keychain that Melly gave me for my birthday with a pineapple on it. And that just lives in there. And that's in there. So the project lives in there. And then I have this from Weight Watchers. I did Weight Watchers years ago. The chart for the pattern. And then a physical calendar that I've written the date right on. And it all fits in there. Snug as a bug. My little thing. And I only DMC loop up the colors for that month. So those are the only colors in February other than my always colors, which is my leafing and my centers, which is squash from Weeks Dye Work and I think greenery is the name. Nope, grass. Grasshopper is the green. Greenery was the Pantone 2017, which is why I chose it. Grasshopper, because it looks like greenery. But that's all. So that is my first project for May. And again, my goal is to complete current to date. And then maintain, right? So if I have a miracle and I got all the way to the end of April tomorrow, that's not happening. I got all the way to the end of April tomorrow. Then I would just have to keep current with May day by day because I've gotten into a good habit of stitching every night. It's just become, I stopped turning the TV on at night and that seems to be helping. So we are listening to audiobooks. We're my son. So my son and I lay down before my husband and in our house lights out 830. So we're listening to an audiobook for a half hour with the lights on, turning off the lights and listening to another half hour. This is a good routine for us. It's helping us unwind. It's, I, I want to say Jen, Delicious Threads, told me this. That if you look at screens, they actually wake you up. Were you and I the ones talking about that, Jen? I feel like Jen told me that. Um, but it's real. Like, so I stopped keeping my phone in my room. My Fitbit tells me it's time to wind down at 8.45. And that's it. That's my routine now. And it seems to be working really well. So that means I'm stitching every night. Not a lot, like a half an hour, right? So we'll see how much I get done. Um, and I only work on Eliza on the weekends. I'm not going to even try and, because that's a lot. So first of all, the project's super tiny and it's all that, right? But it's also, excuse me, it's also super involved. So like all the threads... Let me show you. This is my Eliza box. So in the bottom, I have all my threads. And I think you remember I did a lot of DMC subs. So like this is the DMC and that's the fancy floss. The DMC and the fancy floss. And so I went through and I kind of subbed what I thought worked. And then this is, I mean, this is from Target. It's just a little clip together. I use these for English paper piecing too. They're great for that. So all y'all getting into English paper piecing, keep your papers and your fabric on the bottom, keep your basted pieces on the top with like your scissors and your thread and stuff. It's really easy. So I have my printout of the pattern because I photocopy because I, I like a working copy. And then I have my color card. I have the colors for the section I'm working on only. Scissors, needle minder, you want to see these? So I had to go up to, I think these are twos. No, these are 1.25s. There you go. Those are my stitching glasses. So these are 1.25s. So when I'm stitching, it's perfect. But when I look up, my eyes have a hard time with it. These are my eyes for stitching. And they're like Walmart $9.99. Actually, I think they're Target, but they're $9.99. These were not expensive. They're nothing fancy. I went with the leopard print because why wouldn't you? And these are my, these are my eyes. Now that I have a magnifier, 
I haven't needed them. Okay. The first day I stitched with these, the next day I stitched with the magnifier. I've stitched on Eliza twice. That being said, this is working. So it's a little bit involved. A lot of pieces, the box, the layout. It's a bit much for bedtime stitching. So it's my weekend stitching. And it just lives right here in my office. Um, I might blind you. Sorry in advance. That's my, st oh, nope, the light's low. So that's my stitchy spot. It's a chair that my darling Janelle gave me. It's a blanket we bought in Disneyland. And then a blanket that my friend, no, my mom made this one. Sorry. My friend Jill made me one too, but this is the one my mom made. And that's where I work on Eliza. With a knot and a magnifier. All those good things. So that's that. Second mania project is my epic stocking. So mentioned the fires a little bit, but coming out of the fires, I decided that having projects that I could grab in an emergency would be good. And I got it in my head that I want a Christmas stocking. So inspired by my sons, which I've been working on for longer than we're ever gonna admit. Um, so this is my son's stocking. And I might even finish it someday, but not this week. And there's a big teddy bear and all the animals. And his name's not Maggie. It's a kid. Um, but what I did is I took this template. So the way that this comes is it comes with a big piece of Ada. And then it comes with a piece of fabric that has got a stocking drafted on it. Probably for the lining or the backing. I don't know. So using this as my inspiration, taping one to the window, etc. I tried to explain this last time. It didn't go well. Um, see? Someday I'll finish. Eh, that's not even right. Is it? Goes like that. That's like around the bear. But not anytime soon. Um, I chose a pattern that I liked for my own stuff. So what I did is it's a donut stitch pattern, which I'm not sure if I'm familiar with them, but they're super, uh, a lot of color, almost solid stitching, uh, full coverage stitching. And I drew my own stocking. Now, this is a sketch. This is not the stocking I drew on my fabric. This is just to represent what I'm trying to articulate. So I chose the pattern and then I decided to put it on a stocking. I started in the middle ish. And then the lines that you see are the edges of my stocking ish. So I started with the rabbit. I'm a little bit done. I messed up. His pants are the wrong color. I started stitching his pants with Alice's blue. Haven't torn it out yet. Kind of got frustrated. So my goal for Mania on this project is to finish the rabbit and then keep going till I get to the edge of my chart. So starting at the rabbit, stitching until I get to the edge of my stocking because I want to know how far it's going to go this way. So my goal is to finish the rabbit and then to stitch, yeah, to stitch to this line. I don't know how deep, that might be a single line. I don't know. But I wanna see how far over I am in the design before I get too far into it so I can recalculate and make sure I don't need to move my, make sure my pattern's in the right spot. Um, pinned to this, I have just the frame color. It's a DMC, it doesn't have its tag on it, so I couldn't even tell you what it is if I wanted to but it's the color that she uses for all the edging. Um, and basically every time I go to Michael's or Joanne's right now, I buy myself a skein because the pattern calls for like 20 something of them. It has a cute little, um, this is a row tracker thing for knitting, but I think it works fine for holding floss to a project. So I just pinned it on there. And then because it's my favorite place to be on vacation, I keep all of my materials in a bag. I came home, 
with either souvenirs we bought or souvenirs someone brought us from Disneyland. Not dated. I don't know where it's from. And that's my second project for Mania. So that's two. And then my third. Oh, oops. Nope. I'm not going to work on it, so let's not even mention it. If I pick up Kraken, I will talk about it in my next video. It's my, if I don't feel like working on what I want to work on project. So, Clouds Factory. She did it again, you guys. If you haven't seen the epic Disney's um, princess thing that she did, at least go check it out. The frames are free, which very generous of her. And they're very intricate and have gorgeous levels of detail. And she's done an amazing job on it. And then you can either pay a lump sum and get all of the charts she created for it, plus two that don't exist yet, or she's planning them and she hasn't released them yet. She's kind of being vague there. I don't know. Or you can buy as you go. So knowing that I don't intend to make the epic, huge, massive princessy thing, I'm perfectly fine not spending the lump sum. So I bought one pattern because I have an idea. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm so excited about this. But if it fails, I'm going to be really bummed. So the council knows about it. And per usual, they're cheering me on every stitch of the way. You guys. I never knew I could have friends like these ladies from this community. They're amazing. And I'm so blessed. But not there's no but there. So yes, they are amazing. Period. End of statement. I am nervous that my idea won't come to fruition because my track record indicates I don't really finish things. And I'm really excited about this idea. And I got it in my head that I not only want it, but I want it now. So I didn't wait for mania because this was supposed to be my mania start. But eh, it's four days away. Who cares, right? So it's not a mania start, but it is my mania start. So I'm doing an epic mania. Three projects that have very unique concepts to them that I'm very excited about. And I bought one princess pattern to start with. I think I'm going to do a total of three. Well, I know I'm going to do a total of two. And then I think think I'm going to do parts of two others instead of the full thing. But I haven't made a final decision there, so we're not going to go into those details. So, this is the one I start with. Moana. I love this movie. I love the soundtrack. I love the characters. I love the message. I started with Moana. And because I have the attention span of a gnat, I started right away. And don't ask me where my minders are from. I don't know. This is the official Eliza sampler that my darling Bendy sent me. So that's Imperfectly Perfect Heather, I think is her name. This was sent to me eons ago because it's a Q and I'm Cali Q online. And this. Jen, you didn't make that one, did you? It's plastic. I don't know where it came from. I guess if it didn't come from Jen, I don't really, because I don't really buy minders anymore. I kind of, kind of went overboard. But I have Pua and Tafiti. And I love them. And they're beautiful. And my goal for this mania, I'm going to show you the chart, but I'm not going to show you the chart because I'm not giving you the color chart. My goal for this mania is to finish this side of the pattern. And if I finish that side of the pattern, to start 
that side. And lest somebody have an opinion on this topic, c'est moi. Epic Mania. Three projects. And then I have my three other projects in the wings. So my work project, my saw with my son, and Eliza. That should keep me busy, right? And I still want to do a royal wedding start, I think. I thought I was going to do the God Saves the Queen Bee, but now I don't know because I got another one from, I got the Albert Victoria from Shakespeare's Peddler, Shakespeare's Peddler, and I got another Queen Elizabeth chart on Etsy. I don't know what I'm going to work on, but mania. I'm a fan. I enjoy that people vlog daily. I enjoy the excitement around it. I love how people push themselves outside their comfort zone. <sighs> Julie, the Kansas screw in a Colorado world. Did I get it right? 50, 60, 70, nope, down to 60, back to 50 starts. I want them all. Um, I watched Leslie today, enjoyed that one. Brittany Church, always a fan favorite. You guys have such great ideas for Mania. And I'm excited. And I haven't been excited about stitching in a long time. So thank you. And thank you, community. I love, love you guys. The people that have, brought, that have been brought into my life through this community have become some of the most important people in my life. And for that, I am forever grateful. So on that note, I wish you a kind farewell to April. Happy spring.